Hey everybody, welcome back to The Pressing Matters. I'm Scott, thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for your support um, and thank you for your patience. I've been kind of taking a little break the last uh, 10 to 12 days. Um, not for any particular reason, I just, you know when you, you know, you're, you're getting records and sometimes they're like a little disappointing. I've been getting a, a few disappointing records lately, big releases too. And I'm like, sometimes wondering, what am I doing in vinyl? Why, why am I putting myself through this and spending all this money and being disappointed? And it's like, I don't usually review the, those albums that I'm disappointed in. I just, I like to be enthusiastic about what I'm reviewing. And sometimes it's just not happening, even with a highly vaunted release. But then something comes along that restores my faith in vinyl. And this happened just recently. The this album, the, the Acoustic Sounds Verve Jazz series release of Coleman Hawkins encounters Ben Webster, a record that I had never had before. I'd seen the cover for years and years, and you know, most of you know that I'm exploring jazz um, through these jazz series, and I've got a shelf of jazz records that. You know, some of them I absolutely adore, and I've I've reviewed those. Others I'm not so not so hot on, and they're there in my collection. You know, they don't get a lot of play. So when a record like this comes along, I get excited. And there's several reasons for this. Not only is it a beautiful release. I mean, this is a great series, and these are beautifully produced at a great price, thirty eight dollars. Um, not only is it a beautiful production, Stoughton, Jacket, a pressing by QRP that is perfection, absolute perfection, audio, Nirvana. I was like so happy when I heard this record. It's absolutely flawless. So that was a big, big plus for me. But the music, the mastering, the recording, the performances, all add up to a very special record and I wanted to bring it to your attention in a short video. I'm not going to go on a long time about it, but um, this is mastered by Ryan Smith, all analog from the original master tapes. It's a stereo release from the Verve label. It was recorded in 1957. I cannot believe they got this kind of sound. Well, I, I can kind of believe it because all the Verve Jazz series releases that I've gotten have been superb. But this, oh my God, what a great record. And it's so perfect for a new series that I wanted to start. You know, I did um, start a series way back start, called um, Sunday Morning Jazz Pick. And this could have gone into that category, but I've been listening to it late at night. And I was like, you know what? I need to start a series called Late Night Jazz Listens. And this is going to be the first one in that series. Um, I absolutely adore this record. The music is right up my alley. That, tell me, let me tell you who's on it. So I, I was familiar with most of these people from other jazz records that I have. Uh, Colvin Hawkins is uh, on tenor sax along with Ben Webster. So they are both playing tenor sax. Alvin Stoller on drums. Oscar Peterson, I know from a couple of records that I have already um, that were released in this series. And Herb, uh, Herb Ellis on piano and Ray Brown, of course I know from dozens of records that I have on bass. So a great, a great all-star lineup for this record. The compositions are on the bluesy, mellow side. So it's perfect for listening late at night and enjoying superb sound and engineering and performances. I was blown away, absolutely blown away by this record. Um, it starts out with Blues for Yolande, um, It Never Entered My Mind, Rosita, then side two has You'd Be So Nice to Come Home To, Prisoner of Love, Tangerine, and Shine on Harvest Moon. Um, 
The way the record is set up is Coleman Hawkins is sort of the headliner, but Ben Webster is shares the spotlight, of course. And the two of them, both on tenor sax, either take a solo first and then the other one follows up. And you can tell, and this was great learning experience for me, the difference in their playing styles. Um, you know, Ben Webster has that full, rich, big tone to his tenor sax. And it was so obvious and clear when he was playing and when Coleman was playing. Coleman has a, a little bit of a lighter touch and a different way, a more breathy style. It was fascinating. And sometimes they play on top of each other and you can, you can pick out everything on this. The piano is recorded extremely well. The percussion is fabulous. There's a cut called Rosita, which I absolutely love, that has a Latin beat to it um, on bongos. And it is a sonic treat. The whole album is a sonic treat. You would think that early stereo like this would be, you know, maybe a problem with things panned out too far, but that's not the case with this record. One of the reasons might be, um, besides superb recording technique, is there is um, a lot of reverb on the saxophone. So it kind of fills in behind and in the middle of the sound stage. So, but even with that, you can pick out everything in the placement in the stage. This is a fabulous, fabulous record. I, it made my system sound so good. I was like, oh, you know, sometimes you go through these periods where your system is just not, not, not rocking your boat for whatever reason. And a late night jazz album like this just restores my faith in vinyl. I loved the playback on this. It sounded great. I can highly recommend this record. Um, the first cut was not my favorite, surprisingly. Usually I like what they front load the record with, but it was great. Blues for Yolande is great. But once the record goes into the second cut, the rest is sublime. Just beautiful, beautiful playing, gorgeous sound that that sound on Ben Webster, you can really feel and get a sense of him playing right in front of you. The piano is recorded so well, it sounds so natural, the drums and the bass. The bass is not very prominent, it's not showy for Ray Brown, but it's there and it's beautiful and it anchors it well. This is a great record. I, I think it's a bargain. At $38, I was like, I'm so glad I got this. This is gonna get a lot of play. Um, and I can't say that about every jazz record that I've gotten. Um, it's just so relaxing to listen to late at night and nothing, you know, a late night listen should not have anything too jarring on it. And this is just smooth, buttery sound that will blow you away. I was so impressed. Um, let me know what you think in the comments if you've ever heard this record. Um, I didn't have comparisons and I don't really feel like I need to search out anything else. It was that good. Really, really beautiful job by Ryan Smith and Chad Kasim at QRP. Just beautiful. And the Stoughton Gatefold is superb as usual. So that is my late night jazz pick, the first one in the series. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know what you think. Until next time, I'm Scott for the Pressing Matters. Have a great day.